Yeah, it's probably a good time to start this. is my router, the core of my network essentially. And it's a really good router, don't get me wrong, but its current configuration sucks. Okay, so get this, right? I enabled logging for everything. Unbound DNS, usage, traffic, net flow, most connected IP addresses, everything. And with all those logs being created, it has to store it somewhere, right? So it pins my boot drive to 100%. And that's where the problem starts. The boot drive I'm using is a shish 320 gigabyte hard disk, just one, that was already well used to begin with. I got it out of an old HP Z200 workstation that apparently came from a doctor office and that's why it says destroy on it and with that upped my io delay times so much that doing anything in the web ui takes forever to load oh man this thing is so fucking slow Oh, and I was having it learn routes and I kept running out of RAM, so that's also a big problem. So today I'll be giving my router some quality of life improvements, giving it redundant RAID SSDs, some more RAM, and a fresh, newly configured install of OpenSense. Let's, uh, what what, what do they say? Let's go, let's get into it. Oh, that's this awful. I-O-N-I-C-1-K. Good evening. Quick before the video actually starts, the original version of this video is copyright strike, so I had to make a little bit of adjustments to the intro and some of the music selection here and there. So if you'd like to view the original video, it's over on Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description. Alright, first up on the list of improvements, it's the boot drive. This 300 gig thing has to go. So I went ahead and I exported my OpenSense config. I am not sure how to export my config here. Yeah, so it turns out there's actually a GUI tool for this. I don't know why SSH into the thing, but anyways, apparently with the config XML file you get, you can import it during a new installation, or you can bootstrap it and have a portable router instance. To do this, grab a USB, format it, create a folder in there called conf, and put your configuration file in there. Make sure it's named config.xml. And there you go. So I did go and buy a bunch of SSDs. I bought one of these lots of 10 SSDs. All of them were tested, but I don't know anything about the health. So I connected them all to my machine one by one, and I ran SmartCTL. And I did this for all 10 of those drives. That, that took a while. So I picked the two SSDs that tested the highest health, which ended up being these two. All right, well, it's 2.40 AM. Hopefully no one has to use the internet because this thing is going down. All right. Time to unplug all this crap and take this thing out. I need to just make another video where I redesign this entire f***ing rack. Cause this... Ugh. Well, hello guys, this is my router. So let's go ahead and install that crap. I would upgrade the RAM as well, but that actually hasn't come in yet. Would have just bought like a Xeon D router or something, but... I'm broke. Oh no. Okay, now this... This is gonna be great. This is this is real. This is like epic, you know? I just wanna go to bed. I did not wanna do this tonight. Okay, so another thing I wanna do is I wanna add like a two and a half gig NIC into this thing. And the reason for that is because my gateway is one of those Xfinity things. And I wanna use two and a half gig to that just so I can get the full 1200 down of my internet connection. Cause right now I'm only getting like 980 capped by the one gig. And then from my router, I'm link gagged with dual gigabit to my switch. So if I got two and a half gig from my gateway, my Doxus thing to here, I can get the full internet speed, no problem. Now, really, if I was thinking, I would get a Netgear CM1200, or whatever the f*** they're called, and I would use that, because that supports link aggregation, and I would link egg that to my router, and then keep the link egg from my router to my Switch, but, uh, not thinking. What was I thinking, using a 320 gigabyte, awfully used desktop drive for my router? The most important part of my networking infrastructure, and I, I, I like int it. Needless to say, I'm happy that I'm doing this and changing this hardware out. So this thing is actually the old router before I got this super micro thing here. This is an i3-6100. It had 8 gigs of RAM, dual channel DDR3. I did have an X540T2 in this thing. For those who don't know, that's an Intel dual port 10 gig NIC in here. Uh, I got it for like 17 bucks on eBay, so whatever. And this thing did its job fairly well, actually, for like the two years I was using it. But also, I was using that same boot drive that I just took out of the new router. I was using that in here as well, so. Bro? How did you turn your, the rack ID light just turned itself on? Okay, yes, Urgh. Hello guys, today I'm in my server room and I'm installing open sense on my router. The audio is going to be so bad, I'm so sorry guys. This right here is the config USB. It's where I have the config file, and this is the Ventoy drive I'm using for install. OpenSense, yes, go to OpenSense, and then go to... 
I have this like spurg of energy for no reason. I feel like I'm retarded. Okay. Uh oh, what happened to my router? What? Yeah, so as it turns out, OpenSense really does not like Ventoy USB sticks, which is kind of weird because I've never had anything not work with Ventoy, including previous versions of OpenSense. So I don't know, I just grabbed another 8 gig LG USB stick and wasted about an hour and a half trying to download the image for it on a mobile hotspot connection, but I ended up just fully writing the image to this USB stick, and that ended up working. It's like 4 in the morning, I'm at the point now where I actually have to be kind of quiet. Yes! Yes! Configuration importer! Yes! Select device uh, to import from. We're gonna do the Lexar Jump Drive Sport, which is... Or DA, DA0. Oh, it has to be named config.xml. I'm back actually with the right thing now. Let me just put the thing back in here and let me see if it'll just... Let me select it again. Yeah, I found it. Whoa, that's just new. Okay, so I'm a dumbass. This is actually how you import a configuration during the installation. It's this button right here. And what I did before is actually bootstrap the config, which is not what I was trying to do. So I have a lot of footage here of me being extremely confused why the config didn't import correctly. And I thought I broke it or something, but no, I didn't. Nothing ever happens. I hate this keyboard. It's awful. Oh my God, I did it again. Dude, this keyboard sucks. Ah, uh, this keyboard. Okay. Oh my god. Reboot. Alright, awesome. Let's see what it does. Hopefully it just grabs the interfaces and I'm all ready to go. Okay, what's with the weird screen thing going on here? What? We're gonna manually configure the interfaces because it seems like that's broken. Uh, two. Assign interfaces. That's not the menu that I thought I would get to. Yeah, so apparently the menu options are labeled 0 to 13, and the screen is cut off on the left side, so I couldn't even see that. Apparently this has something to do with the BSD graphics driver within this shell environment. For some reason it, like, cuts off the left part of the screen, and it won't adjust to it for some reason. I don't know, it's weird. Really weird A-speed graphics things. Oh. That's it. Now it's giving me the thing. Yes, we want to configure lags. Um, one and two? I think that's what it is. So IGB one and IGB two. LACP. Last timeout. Yes. Oh, yeah. Auto detect. Plug the WAN cable in. Okay, let's go. Okay, that's not, okay, so that's IGB three. So yeah, yeah, I think we have the link egg. I think I put it in right. So it's one, two, three, four. Okay. Or zero. Wait, what? So if that one was three, holy crap, Lois. I think that's IGB zero and IGB one. I think that's what I needed to be. Whatever that was, I did. Yeah, so I hit the logout button and then it, and then it go. Or no, it goes zero, one, two, three, four, five. Six. Oh, logout is zero. Logout's number zero. Yes, let's configure the lags. IGB0 and IGB1. LACP. So we, we'll put the WAN as lag 0. Oh. No, why did I just do that? Oh my, I thought it said LAN. Okay. We're just winning tonight. Okay, so you are lag 0. We're not doing the opt interface. Yes. Okay. It works now. And... It's not working. Ah, huh? Yeah, bud? You're having fun? Oh, it's so good. It's so good. You know, this is just, this is great. It's, see, I can't go to bed until I actually figure this out. It's 5.20 in the morning and I haven't slept. Everyone in the house needs internet tomorrow or like in a couple hours when people start waking up. So I'm going to go reboot the router and I'm going to see if that works. I'll take you guys with me for that. Well, gosh darn it. We're back here again. All right, let's reboot. Yeah, let's go. I'm eyeing the switch to make sure my lag is actually working and I'm looking at the indicator lights. Oh. I swapped that top cable from that interface down to down to here and the lag started working. You can tell because you can see they're kind of like both working together and one's not orange. <laughs> okay, in theory we have network connectivity, although I don't think it has my config. Can I actually ping? Oh, I, okay, I can ping the router now. That's, that's, that's good. Okay, I mean, I'm on Discord now. It, everything's fine. So does my actual password for the web UI work? It does not. We're here and I have a default configuration. Uh, now that I know how to import it from the web UI, that's what we'll do. System configuration backups. Okay, restore all, choose file. Okay, there's the config. Restore configuration. Oh, oh yeah, uh, the, I don't know. Okay, I actually didn't look. I don't know if that was there before, but that just changed, I think. System is rebooting now. All right, well, imagine it changes my lag interfaces to what they were before, then I have to go back and switch them. Oh, uh, that'd, be, that'd be like kind of funny. <laughs> it is. Oh, and <laughs> it got the picture. 
I just don't have any of the themes that I had installed or like any of the other apps that I had installed, which is normal. I have to go back and, and reinstall a couple things, a couple packages here, but let me check my unbound DNS just to make sure that I have my override still here. Yeah, I, I do. If I go to Jellyfin, this is great. It all works now. This is awesome. Okay. Oh my God. Oh, it's so much faster. Oh, that's so nice. You know, you never realize how efficient SSDs actually are. Okay, so this is it for now. I'm gonna go to bed. <laughs> <gasps> so it's been like two days and the router has been working a lot better. Although I had some RAM come in. So I'm gonna quickly take this offline, put some more RAM in it, and then we'll bring it back up. So, and now it's off. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna remove this. We're gonna do two and four. Yeah, there we go. Now we have 16 gigs of dual channel ECC DDR3. Let's put the cover back on. All right, let's put this thing back where it belongs. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the monitor, keyboard, and mouse. Just in case for some reason it doesn't post, I can get a postcode and figure out what's going on. Being stuck at postcode 19 is not a very good sign. I think postcode 19 is like no memory detected or something stupid. Okay, so I put the RAM sticks in like that in DIMMs 1 and 2, and now it's cycling postcodes and posting this time like it's supposed to. So, I don't know. Okay, so it's been a few days, but I'm back. We have 16 gigs of RAM in the router, all working fine. I also installed all the packages and I did all the other configuration that I needed to do. So we're back to normal. Except when I looked at the router today, uh, <laughs> one of the SSDs is already dead. Check this out. I go here. Okay, so like, let's read the info. Smart overall health self-assessment test result fail. Drive failure expected in less than 24 hours. Save all data. And you can see ID number 223 media wear out indicator type pre fail failing now you gotta be kidding me this didn't make any sense to me because i this is one of the ssds that actually tested one of the best out of the bunch so now i gotta replace one of those ssds which i'm gonna be real i have no idea how to do in like this kind of a zfs root raid well i went and i ssh into the thing and I went ahead and removed the drive that was having problems from the ZFS raid. Oddly enough, ZFS was reporting nothing wrong at all with the raid, and there was a recent scan, though I decided to replace the SSDs just to be safe. So I detached it from the raid. Now if we go Z pool status, we have only one drive. I have a couple SSDs here that we can put into the router. I mean, I'm gonna only put in one, right? Cause I did replace the other one, but it'll probably be this one. Some of you may notice I'm on a different camera, and that's because this, my Galaxy S10 that I usually film with, yeah, this thing is like capital C cook. This is like the second Galaxy S10 where this has been a problem for me. Please like and subscribe so I can buy a new phone. And here, actually before I replace the drive, let me show you what it tells me when I boot the thing up. It's really funny. Port one, scan disk, smart status bad, backup and replace. How many times now have I taken this thing out? Way too many. Now from here, it was pretty standard. I replaced the SSD and I came back. Okay, well, the WebUI says that we are okay on ADA zero, the drive that we just replaced, but now we failed on ADA one. What? And then I put it back in the array and started resilvering until I realized that would not have been bootable at all. Yeah, it turns out I would need to either back up or create a whole new partition map with a boot partition and everything on the new drive I put in. And it was extremely late and I just wanted to get it done quick. So naturally, I decided to replace both SSDs and decided to reinstall OpenSense again. This time around though, it was a lot easier and faster because this time I have proper boot medium, but I also still have the backup to my config and everything there. So I was able to get that done pretty quickly. Okay. Yeah, I'll have this update. I'm just gonna go to bed. I know, they're penalizing the customer, you know, taking away a feature that the watch used to have. I just think a fucking horseshoe up that ass, baby. Okay, long story short, we have everything back to normal now. Both of our drives are okay, and they've been okay for a few days. And check this out, I got thermal sensors working, which is not something that worked in my last install of OpenSense, like my last couple of installs of OpenSense. So now I got CPU thermal sensors, that's awesome. And I have a few other things I have to set up, like dynamic DNS and some other services that I would like to deploy on the router here soon, but now eh, I'll do that some other time. So, um, I guess that's it, right? Well, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hit like if you like this video, dislike if you hate routers, or if you hate me. If you really like this video, consider supporting me over on Patreon. I've been way more active over there. And go ahead and join the Discord. Can I ping at everyone? Yeah, go. See how quickly it fills up. Oh no. <laughs>
Mr. Yurk, how many how many wrinkles do you have in your brain? Oh god, it gets worse. This is actually a and Q. It's A and Q. And the answer is bye guys, figure out the question. Oh no! So oh fucking God. funny! Oh no! <laughs> no. Yeah, 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 let me see. Clock! Is that a new label? Yarp, can you set the call quality Thank to you. 8 kilobits per second and see how awful oh it sounds? Can we actually can we do that? This? Johan, it sounds like you're digital radio. Oh, no, no, no. It sounds like P25, dude. There'll be a link in the description. I have a lot more products in the works. Some of them are really exciting, so definitely stay tuned.